Welcome to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemery, where we're going to dive into the basics of writing with storyteller Rebecca Biggis. She is a um, podcast uh, community queen at our uh, podcast. She has her own podcast where she talks about writing, storytelling, how to learn how to write your own book. She has a lot of great information. And today we're going to focus on what you need to know to start your writing journey from crafting to compelling characters to building and engaging plots. This episode will provide you with all the essential tips to and insights to bring your words to life. And so I want you to listen because Rebecca has a great way of expressing how to show storytelling in the right format and how everybody has a story to tell and how everybody can bring that story to life. So Rebecca, tell everybody a little about yourself and tell them a little about, about what you're going to talk about today and, and let's get into it because this is a really great topic. Okay. Um, I've been writing all my life. No, really, since I was 10 years old. So we're talking 60 years. Um, I have 17, I think, books. Could be 18, or it could be I'm working on number 18. <laughs> I lose count. Um, it's just something I do. I think words are magic. Words mm -hmm. have power. Yes. And if you put them out there right... You can actually sell your words. Yeah. That, that's kind of a, a bonus. Um, but you have to know the basics. The basics start with, can you write a sentence? Does mm -hmm. it have a subject? Does it have a verb? You can add all the adjectives and adverbs in there that make it a delightful sentence. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of just saying the boy ran, the boy is your subject. What he did was he ran. Um, you can say the young boy was running down the street um, to avoid a vicious dog. And that makes it a lot more colorful. It gives you an idea of where the boy is and why in the world he's running. Um, we've only told you he's a young boy. He could be anywhere from three to 12 because he's not a teenager in those years. So, you know, we would get a little more descriptive with the boy. We might even give him a name, which would be an easy way to connect with the boy. We might call him Tommy. We might say six-year-old Tommy was running down the street to get away from a vicious dog. Now you have a much better sentence. Right. And you build on your sentence. You take your basic sentence and you just build on it and make it as colorful and complete as you can. Right. That's the basics. Now, put it together in a paragraph. You need three to four sentences. They don't have to be 10 sentence paragraphs. Right. There, there's, no, there's no set number for a paragraph. Two sentences can make a paragraph. Right. 20 sentences can make a paragraph. Right. It depends on what you're trying to convey and how much information you need to get into any paragraph you are writing. Right. Okay. Par paragraphs like sentences. You got to have a capital letter and a period at the end of each one. Right. Or if it's an exclamation, an exclamation point. If it's a question, a question mark. Very simple stuff, guys, but a lot of people don't know that. Or they have forgotten what they learned because they're not writing anything. Right. Those are the basics. If someone talks, they get quotation marks around what they're saying. Right. Johnny said gets a comma. Then you put your quotation marks and tell me whatever it was Johnny said. Right. That's the important part. And Johnny might have had three or four sentences to spiel out there before you put that end um, quotation mark. Make sure your period is inside of the quotation mark. Yes. Because the period designates the end of the sentence. The quotation mark designates the end of 
whatever Johnny's saying. Right. Okay. Johnny's talking to Susie. So when Susie responds to whatever Johnny says, you have to change paragraphs. Right. Every time a speaker changes, you change the paragraph. Right. Please don't tell me, but it's going to make my book too long and cost me more. In the long run, it's not going to cost you more because you're going to sell more books because it's right. Exactly. So, yeah, it may cost you a little bit because instead of writing 180 pages, you have 200. Right. It's not going to cost you enough difference to not do it. Right. It is going to cost you in reviews if you don't. Mm -hmm. Those five-star reviews become four and three-star reviews. Right. And if it's really bad, it'll come become a two or a one star. <laughs> um, you do have to watch for that. Yeah. Because you don't respond to reviews ever. Mm -hmm. You don't say thank you to the people who have given you a five star. You just brag about it to all your friends. Right. But you don't argue with the person that gave you the one star. Right. I don't care what they said they didn't like about your book. You don't argue with them. It's not good for business. Right. Um, I knew someone who argued because she wrote a King Arthur story in which Genevieve was not the queen. And people just came at her from all sides. You can't take a legend and change it. <laughs> and you really can't because they're legends for a reason. Yeah. There is some truth to them. Right. And she argued back. And she argued that her King Arthur was a Roman soldier before he became a king in England. Right. Which did not go over well at all because that's not at all what the history says. Yes. So you have to be really, really careful that you don't argue back and you get it right, especially if it's history. Yeah. Especially if it's a legend you're writing about. Um. Because legends do have some basis right. in reality. Um, there probably was a King Arthur at one time. Mm -hmm. I have not gone back to research that. I just assume he was king at some point. Right. Whether the circumstances are what are in the legend, I don't know. Right. But it's an accepted legend. It's been accepted for generations. Yeah. You can't change it. I don't care who you are. <laughs> you can't change it. If you want to write about a king um, and his queen being someone other than Guinevere, that's great. But don't make him King Arthur. Right. Right. And if he's a Roman soldier, make him a king in Rome or in Italy, <laughs> not in England. That just doesn't work for people. I agree. And those who write about the King Arthur legend, even if it's an offshoot from it, stick with the legend. Mm -hmm. You know, did Queen Bennett, Guinevere and... King Arthur have children. No one's ever said. Right. So if you want to write about a prince or a princess that might have been their child, go ahead and do it. But stick with the original story as you're doing it. Right. These are some really basic things. If you're writing history, know the history. Yes. If you are writing about a legend, know the legend. Right. If change the legend but you can enhance it yes um if you wanted to write about 
um sir galahad mm -hmm. oh you can create an entire story around him that just barely touches on the legend mm -hmm. and be perfect no one would argue with you at all right as long as you're true to the period that he lived in right um they did the movie elizabeth and a companion book was written by tasha alexander tasha alexander writes historical fiction mm -hmm. and she gets it right every time because she spends a lot of time researching before she puts it on paper right so when she was asked to write the companion book for the movie there's a disclaimer in the front that said some of the information in this is historically out of order. Some people were not in this time period that is taking place. Right. They came later or they came before, but they're not in this one. Um, I think it had to do with Sir Francis Drake. And he came later, but he was in the movie, so they had to put him in the book. Right. And in order to make it real, you have to have the disclaimer that things are out of order. Right. And so if you're doing historical fiction, go look it up and get it right the first time. Right. You know, there are wonderful characters out there in history that you could write volumes on yeah as long as you've got what actually happened in the right order right and that's that's also important in telling a story if there's something that you're writing about that you don't have knowledge of right look it up mm-hmm Google it for crying out loud. It's not that hard. Yes. I mean, um, there are AI um, things that you can go to and look up information, and the AI will give you the information and ask you, is there more that you want? Yes. Tell them Yes. Because they'll spit it out in volumes, but they'll mm -hmm. spit out the right information. Yes. And you won't have to go through 8 million books to do your research. Right. Um, you won't have to go to the library and do your research. Right. It's, it's really um, anymore. It's all at your fingertips. Exactly. Use what's there. Do not copy word for word what an AI bot gives you. Because everybody will know you did. Exactly. Take the information, use what you need, put it in your own words. Yes. So it's you writing and, and not some AI doing it for you. Exactly. Um, I know a lot of people who use AI to generate the ideas that they want and then they take them and they turn them all into their own. Yes. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. But don't expect an AI to write your book. Exactly. At this point, it won't get published. Yes. Very true. Um, the Library of Congress that you have to go through to get your um, Library of Congress control number Yes. Has a program that reads your book. Mm -hmm. And they're reading more and more books now because they're finding some are plagiarized. Yes. From other um, works and they won't publish them. Right. Uh, there was a young lady who did uh, a graphic novel. Right. And she went to mid journey or night cafe or something that creates 
AI images and made a beautiful cover and put these AI images in with her writing. Right. And she had been given a copyright and she had been given a Library of Congress control number. Mm -hmm. With that, you have to send your book to the Library of Congress so they can match it up and see that it's exactly what you told them it was going to be. Right. They rejected her copyright and her Library of Congress control number because she had generated AI graphics. And they're not accepting those yet. Wow. So don't go to AI and look for your graphics for your book yet. Yes. Um, give it another year or two before they finally figure out that the graphics are not plagiarized. They're coming from prompts from your brain into a generator. Right. And then they're generating what you're asking for. And if you don't get what you're asking for the first time, mm -hmm. look at what your prompt was. Right. And ask again. And I have done this. I can't tell you how many times. Mm -hmm. And there are things that AI cannot generate correctly. Right. I ask for ballet slippers on a piece of sheet music. Sheet music was perfect. Mm -hmm. Ballet slippers, not so perfect. <laughs> so then I ask for ballet shoes and I get a pink or a red shoe. And I'm going, why can't they do this? Yet I can ask for a ballerina to be on stage and I can get beautiful toe shoes. But they can't do it if you ask them to just make toe shoes. Yes. They don't have that concept is not there yet. Um, I got some wonderful pictures with pink and red slippers, but definitely no ribbons to tie them up. And they had little tiny heels on them and soles and things that you don't get on a ballet slipper. Mm -hmm. So even if you're looking for a picture to go with an article you're writing or something, you have to be careful um, and pay real close attention to exactly what you're telling this AI generator. Right. They ha they're they limited. Um, if you go to Night Cafe, you can't put um, an adult in a picture with a child. However, you can ask for a picture of an adult reading to children. Mm hmm or a grandparent reading to a grandchild. Right. But to put, I was trying to put grandparents, parents, and teenagers in a picture of them playing a tank, and I couldn't get it. And I couldn't get just seven, um, like, croquet balls for Patank in the picture, they would give me 14 or four, but not seven. Okay. Like, really, what are you doing? But um, I gave the picture I got to the person that I was doing it for, and she was going to send it over to her graphics guy and see if he could alter it and, and put the people in it that needed to be there. Right. You would get all adults, seniors, and say parents. Right. But no children, no anything. Yeah. And you couldn't get grandparents and grandchildren or parents and children. Right. Or a family. It just was not working. Right. 
but they have keywords you cannot put in together because they're afraid you're going to create something that's wrong. Right. And I understand why they have them and don't have an issue with them at all. Right. So it's, it's very hard when you're trying to make something that's worthwhile. I mean, I could put children and adults on a playground. Right. But I couldn't put one adult with children on a playground. Okay. Because that made it wrong. Gotcha. Not what I was looking for at all. Yes. But, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I was looking at a mother with her child at a playground. Right. And I said mother and child. I didn't specify boy or girl. Right. Because I wouldn't have cared um, at the local playground. Right. I think I said at the local park. <laughs> didn't work at all. Right. You know, and it could have been a park or a playground or whatever, but. Yeah. It just was not working for me. Right. So along with knowing the basics mm -hmm. of sentence structure, par paragraphs, um, where to put quotation marks. Right. Knowing your history. Know what you can and can't put in a graphic. Right. Know that at this point you need to hire an artist. Yes. You're going to illustrate. Of course. Definitely. Um. You know, it's just, and then making your sentences interesting. Yes. If you're giving a person a name, please give them a first and last name. <laughs> because at some point, I want to connect with this person on a human level. Exactly. And if you go through your book, and if you're two pages in, and I still don't know the name of your person, I'm a little upset yeah I, I can't see this person right i can see a description but it it's not concrete yeah um don't leave things to your reader's imagination right if you are describing a young man who has broad shoulders like a football player mm-hmm then you need to tell me he has broad shoulders like a football player. Right. He can be slender and have broad shoulders. That doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Right. But you have to tell me. 100%. Because if I don't know, what I dream up in my mind may not be what you intended. Exactly. I mean, if he has black hair and blue eyes i want to know this yes i don't want to assume he has black hair and dark eyes that would make him different from what you're portraying right um people who write books and never give their characters last name i end up putting down their books they're the first ones on my list that go to the library mm-hmm and they get probably a three-star review. And the reason is I can't connect with the character. Right. Um, I started reading a book and there were two girls about 12 years old. Right. I have no idea what they look like. I mean, I'm a whole two chapters into the book. I have a name, first name for this girl. Do I know, is she tall, short, fat, thin? Yeah. Somewhere in between? Right. I know nothing. I don't know if she has blonde hair, brown hair, black hair, red hair. Right. Streaked hair. <laughs> I don't know anything. Right. So why do I care about her? Exactly. And two chapters in, we start introducing the next character because the girls are going to meet. Yeah. I have a name. Once again, 
I have no description. Right. I I don't know who she is. Right. I I don't feel like I know her because there's no description of her. Right. Good Lord, folks. Don't tell me she has the face of an angel unless you're going to tell me what the angel's face looks like. Exactly. My angels and your angels don't look alike. I'll tell you that right now. Mm. It's kind of like the only books where I don't care if there's a last name. Mm -hmm. If you are writing fantasy. Right. If you are writing uh, science fiction with aliens. Right. But describe the alien for crying out loud. Yes, exactly. In fantasy, describe the characters. I had a a book that started out and my character had her hair piled on top of her head and you heard the click of her shoes as she walked down the hall in the empty school building. Right. And I had turned the first 5,000 words in for review. Right. From someone who's a publisher and I wanted to know. Yeah. And the first thing he said was me, to me was, put some clothes on her because I'm thinking she's Bo Derek. <laughs> and I'm going, oh my God, I didn't even think about that kind of description. Yeah, yeah. For this woman walking down a hallway in an empty school. Yeah. Um, she was the school principal and it was her first job. And she was back in her home elementary and she's talking about how the elementary looks so much smaller to her now than it did when she was a kid. Right. And um, she hears a noise and goes to check it out. And then she hears men's voices that aren't supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. And she closes herself in a bathroom and she's taken off her shoes and she's standing on the toilet seat. And she's whispering to 911 that there's somebody in the building. Right. And they told her to stay where she was. And she's thinking, all I've got are my high heeled shoes as a weapon. Yeah. Well, no one came in. And she heard them talking about leaving while they were out in the hallway. Yeah. Said, Please don't come in. Please don't come in. And they didn't. They left. And so by the time the police arrived, there was no one there. And she had stepped into the hallway and the officer finds her and says, thought you were told to stay where you were. And she said, I knew they had left the building. They were talking about it. And so, you know, it, he said, technically everything you've got in this book is perfect. Except I don't know what she looks like. Oh. See, it's important to really describe your characters. I know for me, when I read a book, you know, I, I look for the details of characters because I want to be, be able to imagine in my head exactly what they look like, what they perceive to, me, to be, you know, for and me. From that time on, I made sure that I was describing my characters so that you would feel like you could meet them walking down the street. Right. Exactly. That I wanted that image of you actually walking down the street and saying, Oh, I know who that is. Right. Now my characters are not based on real people. So they're not going to be walking down the street. <laughs> where You would see them, but in your mind, I want, you to think of them as someone you could see. Right. And I want you to care about them. Yeah. And I have one character who in the book she appeared in to begin with was the real villain. Mm -hmm. um, she was the teenage um, queen bee. Everybody hovered around. And if she said, do it, it was done. Right. But when she came back and appeared two books later, 
Mm -hmm. She was a different person. And they had an idea why she had become the mean girl that she was. Right. But they were waiting for, she'd gone into a coma. Um, she had a seizure in court and gone into a coma and they couldn't finish prosecution until she revived. Mm -hmm. Well, she'd been revived for over a year and nobody bothered to inform the court. Mm. And the police get a call to the private nursing home she'd been put in. And here she is holding a hostage and yelling at her because she's a fat girl. Mm. And the officer goes in and she says, I want you to let her go. Right. And then she talked to the girl about why she was so mean to this fat girl. And she says, I know why you were. Right. She said you were heavy at one time and you hated it. Yeah. And you wanted everybody else around you to feel bad if they were heavy. Right. Said, that girl's done nothing to you. You chose to be mean. Right. And they get to the point where she was abused as a child. And that's why she got heavy. Right. And they had sent her to a summer camp because they knew something was wrong, but they didn't know what. Yes. And she went into exercise mode, um, walking mode, eating mode, so that she lost this weight. Mm -hmm. And when she showed up in the school in junior high, yeah, in seventh grade, she was not the fat girl anymore. I like that. But she was the mean girl. Uh, okay. And she was mean to anybody that got in the way of what she wanted, mostly the boy she wanted. Gotcha. Um, and it was about bullying. And where they had taken bullying to the extremes where now they were breaking the law. Right. And so in the end, um, she had become a different person. Yeah. She actually changed and was no longer the mean girl and could be counted on to help others. Right. And it was a, it was a transformation. It didn't happen overnight. Right. And, but she didn't want to be released to her parents. Okay. She was helping out in a mission center with a nun with girls that she was trying to get off the streets. Yes. Were mostly runaways. Mm -hmm. And this girl was to help them out with their studies while she completed her own. Right. And there was a break in and the nun got hurt. And the girls got displaced and she just took charge. She said, we have a routine to follow. Yeah. And this is kitchen duty this week. We'll rotate it next week. Mm -hmm. This is study hour. We'll do what we have to do. And we'll move on. Right. Until the nun could recover and come back to work. Right. And <laughs> it was a, a parish priest that took them in because he'd had an all boys school that had closed, but they had dorms. Right. And so he could assign the girls to dorms. And this girl did it. She said, you, 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 you two are going to room. You two are going to room. And if there's any issues, I need to know now. Yes. And they just followed what she said. And he was amazed that she set it up and everything. And those volunteers that were coming in to teach the kids still came in to teach the kids. And the kids were there. Right. And he said, she's been a blessing because he said, I didn't know what I was going to have on my hands. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for him to walk through and see education happening in the building that 
had been closed for a couple of years. Um, it, to him, it was a miracle. Right. And so he was more than willing to help, you know, save these rescued girls. Yeah. So it depends just on what it is you're telling. And you have to be compelling when you do. There's got to be a reason for you to like or dislike the person. Right. And the more detail you can give, the more rounded the person is. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got flaws. Even right. your main character has a flaw. Mm -hmm. Find it. You know, maybe your main character chews their fingernails. Yeah. Um, whatever it is, you know, they're, they're trying to stop smoking. So they do the Kojak thing with the Tootsie Roll Pops or something. Yeah. Anything that's a flaw is there. And if it moves the, the plot forward, you emphasize it. Yeah. If not, you just mention it and move on. Right. But you always know. It's there. And usually it's a character flaw that stays with them. You know, there's the one that's forever doing this, just like this. And they don't even know they're doing it. Yeah. It's just when they get frustrated, that's what they do. And that can happen anytime they're frustrated. Right. And my main character didn't ever want to work with teens again because that was an experience she never wanted. Right. And she said, I don't know how I'm going to have kids if they have to be teenagers <laughs> at some point. And um, my daughter says, teenagers, they make you understand why some mothers eat their young. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all different. Yes. They're all different. Um, you know, my granddaughter was different than my grandson. Right, exactly. My daughter was different than most teens because it was just she and I. Right, exactly. And it's different when there are two parents. Mm -hmm. It's different when there are siblings. Um, she's learned that. She has nine half siblings and a stepbrother. So yeah, she's she's learned this right by being around them. And so she chooses when to be around them and when not to. Right. Um, it's just she can only take so much at one time and she's overwhelmed. You know, having been an only child and learning that you um actually had 13 siblings and a stepbrother That's like, like almost 18 years old was like really yeah so let me ask you a question mm -hmm. with all the things that we talked about today if you had to really like emphasize on some imp important um turning points that you'd like to emphasize what would be those 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 turning points? Go back and review the basics. Know how to make your sentence. Know how to construct a paragraph. Know when to change paragraphs. Know when to put in your quotation marks. And that, yes, you change them. Every time somebody speaks, it's a different paragraph. Um, they're not in the same one because then nobody really knows who's talking. Right. And that's the reason for it is to designate who's talking. Right. Um, there will be sentences where your character is responding to the other one and you don't say said Todd or said Jane or answered. Yeah. You just give the answer. Right. And it might be a one sentence with quotation marks around it. Right. You just always have to have a tagline just like to that. bury it. It doesn't. 
That's very good advice. I, I like that. And I also liked how you emphasized about being very detailed and explaining who your characters were. I thought that was yeah. very important too, because you really want to have a book where you can visualize everything in your head as you're reading, especially if you're writing fiction, you know, uh, you really want to be able to be able to visualize the characters in the book. So I, I liked how you, you emphasize that also. This has been yeah. great, Rebecca. I, I love when you come on the show, you give such great advice. And today's was today's advice was phenomenal because there's so many people out there that want to write a book. They just don't know where to begin or they, they yeah. just, you know, their ideas of writing a book may not be the best way to do it. And you really, you know, I think you really set the the primitives down and and really help people see what needs to be done in order to write a successful book that, you know, a large community of people, you know, are going to enjoy. Follow you and tell their friends about you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So tell everybody where they can find you because you have a lot of services. Tell everybody your website and the services that you provide. Okay, my website is https the two backs um slashes www.rebeccavigas.com. That's Rebecca R E B E C K A. Vigas is just like it sounds, V I G U S dot com. Um on the website you can get um the free program. Why write now? Why write now? And it's why write, W-R-I-T-E, now. Why write, R-I-G-H-T, now. And there's a reason for that. Um, if you're going to be writing, you need to do it now. Mm -hmm. um, before Alzheimer's or dementia sets in, before you get an illness that makes you incapable of doing that, um, before there's an accident and you don't survive because none of us are promised tomorrow. Exactly. And so that program is on there. Um, I have a storytelling program on there. It's a two hour course. I'm doing one, I believe. It's March 12th from 11 to 1. And yes, there will be breaks in there because no, I don't expect anybody to sit and write for two hours. That would be insane. <laughs> Just learning to write. You want to learn how to do it before you actually tackle it. Right. Um, and there would be a follow up to that so that you're not lost. Right. And then I'm doing it again at seven o'clock at night on the 14th from seven to nine. Again, understanding that many of you have worked all day and to sit two hours and try and write something isn't going to work. Exactly. But you can take notes and get the important stuff. Exactly. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, we'll do a follow up and see how you get started and get you started. Um, but when you sign up for one of my courses, there is a website, a uh, site on Facebook that's a private site. And when you sign up, you get access to that site where I drop in and give little tidbits off and on during the week, um, little tidbits of encouragement so that you can right you can ask questions in there i do answer them it's not unheard of mm -hmm. i sometimes do um an hour once a week and i vary the hours uh, morning mid afternoon um early evening later evening so that everybody gets a chance and if your question was answered in the morning the replay is already right there because i do it live right in in the group right and so you can go get it whenever you want um but i i do answer the questions and i do let people know who asked them and it's a whole group of people 
who want to write mm -hmm. and ha have to start somewhere. Some of them have written a book already. No big deal. Um, it, they can bounce off. You can bounce ideas off them. Um, they can tell you what they've learned. Uh, they can tell you to keep working at it. Ask them what you want to ask. Right. And they'll answer. They're, they're a good group. So those are what are up there right now. I have a course on developing characters that's coming. And then I have a more intensive course on if you actually want to write a book, getting it done. So um, the initial course is $103. Mm -hmm. um, I have to charge Kentucky sales tax. It's already built in there. Don't mm -hmm. worry about it. It's just a flat $103 for your two hours. And there is the follow-up hour, which is attached to that, which will be two weeks later. No extra costs. Mm -hmm. um, not going to break anybody's bank because I want you to get started. Um. I can't remember what the character one and what the, the character one is for four months. So it's a little more expensive mm -hmm. and it's broken down. If you need payment plans, I do that. It's mm -hmm. not like you have to pay a huge chunk of money out right. of, your, but you do have to make an initial deposit. And there will be a point when you have to make the other one. So it's not a big deal. It's really not. Um, the story, the writing your book one is the most expensive at the moment. And that's your initial um, meeting. And then it's eight weeks. So it's intense um, because we want to get it done. If we hang around more than eight weeks, I'm going to lose you. Mm -hmm. And it won't get finished. And I don't want that. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it. And in that time, in those times when there are more, then there will be more contact with me than just the initial meeting. It's like in four months, you will get sick of seeing my face because <laughs> you will see it definitely once a week um, in a Zoom class so that I can find out where, where you're at, what you need help with, um, specifically what you need help with. So those are limited classes. Um, I've limited them to 50 because I want everybody to have a chance to talk when we meet, not just me talking right that sounds great oh my god this has been amazing rebecca thank you so much for coming on the show today remember that rebecca has her own podcast she's on the advisor but she also has her own podcast with us we have a podcast community with a bunch of different experts in different fields that have different expertise and Rebecca has her own podcast. You can go on there. You can click onto her podcast. You'll see all her different podcasts and she'll talk about storytelling, how to write books. She'll give you advice on all different categories to help you enhance your writing and get to the point where you want to be as a professional writer or even to do it as a hobby or just to help people get to the next level because you have a, 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 a urgeness inside you to just want to help others Rebecca shows you how. So thank you so much, Rebecca, for coming on the show. As always, it's been a, a pleasure and I can't wait to have you back. So I, I look forward to your next series when you that you do with us and we'll be seeing you soon. Sounds great. I love it. <laughs> I love it too. It's been wonderful. I'll talk to you soon, Rebecca. Have a great day. Yep. Bye now. Bye-bye.